A warm welcome back to the History Show here on Uxbridge FM. And guess what? Ken Pierce is back with another story, this time about actor Bernard Miles. Yes, thank you. The actor Bernard Miles was born in Poplar Cottages, Hillingdon Heath, in September 1907. He was the youngest of the four children of Edwin Miles, who worked at the local flower nursery, and his wife Barbara. The family attended Salem Baptist Church, and Bernard later claimed that it was when he recited a poem at the Sunday school that he first tasted applause. Here's a quote. I was hooked for showing off, for exhibiting myself, for being at the centre of an assembly of which I would be the one they were looking at and praising and applauding. Bernard attended the local primary school and then in 1918 he moved to Uxbridge County School in the Greenway. At this period, secondary education was not free. The fees at that time were two pounds, two and sixpence a term. But Bernard was awarded a free place, like many others, because his father was not on a high salary. His brother Leonard was already a pupil there. At school, Bernard was known as soldier. This is because the Latin word for soldier is miles, M-I-L-E-S. It's from that that we get words like military and militia. So Bernard, to his friends, was soldier. The first indication of his acting ability came in 1920, when he and his brother performed a scene from Shakespeare's King John at the school's annual speech day. Bernard later revealed that his costume consisted of the chemistry teacher's overall, his sister's stockings and his own carpet slippers. He was now under the influence of the school's drama teacher, Cecilia Hill, a gifted and cultured lady with connections in London's theatre land. He also found himself in a group of very able friends who regularly performed plays at the school. In 1925, he took the part of Feste, the clown, in Twelfth Night, and in the following year, he was St. Francis in Lawrence Houseman's cycle of plays about St. Francis of Assisi. His final schoolboy part was in Richard III when he played the Hunchback King. The local paper reported, He made the man live before us in all his pride of intellect, ruthlessness and cruelty. Bernard had obtained a place at Pembroke College, Oxford, but he left before taking a degree and instead headed for the theatre. He even worked for a while as a stage carpenter, but steadily built a reputation as an actor. In 1931, he married the actress Josephine Wilson, and they went on to have three children but they wanted their children to have a country upbringing. So they bought a house in Hertfordshire. And there they employed an old gardener with a quaint turn of phrase and a wonderful rural accent. This gave Bernard the idea of composing humorous country monologues. And these were to become part of his repertoire for the rest of his life. He also began to appear in films, in the end, over 50. These included the wartime epics, In Which We Serve, and One of Our Aircraft is Missing. He later had notable roles in David Lean's Great Expectations, and also in Moby Dick, where he almost drowned filming in the sea off the Welsh coast. 
The family, the family later had a house in St. John's Wood with a barn in the garden. And encouraged by friends, Bernard and Josephine decided to turn it into a small theatre. They called it The Mermaid, and it had 200 seats. From 1951, their plays and concerts proved successful, and their thoughts turned to moving to a larger venue in London. So they began fundraising for the project. Fortunately, the Corporation of London eventually granted them the use of a derelict warehouse by the Thames in Blackfriars. The New Mermaid was born. It opened in 1959, the first theatre to open in London since the time of Shakespeare. This achievement brought Bernard a knighthood in 1969 and a life peerage in 1979. So he became Lord Miles of Blackfriars. His coat of arms had supporters, that's figures, on either side. One was a mermaid, the other was a Roman soldier a reference to his nickname as a schoolboy in Uxbridge. He died in 1991, aged 83. I'm fortunate to have a copy of a song that Bernard composed for his uh, rural monologues. Uh, a quaint little number, so I'll try and offer it to you now. As I was a driving my wagon one day, I met a young maiden so buxom and gay. I says to her, sweetheart, would you like a ride? And this buxom young maiden got up by my side, and Dobbin and Daisy look around to a horse with a rhythm, me riddle, me riddle, me. I put my arms around her and I kissed her brown hair. I felt her heart beat like a bird in the snare. And it seemed like my horses was right off the ground. And the wheels, they stood still, and the wagon went round. And Dobbin and Daisy looked round for to see, with a riddle me, riddle me, riddle me, we. It was just like a dream, and the time went as fast, that I thought I'd make hay while the sunshine at last. For her skin was as soft and as white as new cream, and she laid in my arms like a girl in a dream. And Dobbin and Daisy looked around for to see, with a riddle me, riddle me, riddle me. I asked her to wed me, she said, yes, I will. Of this kind of loving, I'll ne'er get my fill. And when we are wed, will you still hold me tight? I says, then we can do it from morning till night. And Dobbin and Daisy look round for to see. With the riddle me, 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 riddle I didn't Thank know you could sing, Ken. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you down the folk club next, singing yeah. some songs. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, no. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thanks very much, Ken. That's, uh, yeah. well, I'll make a note of that, that Ken can sing. So we'll have Ooh. to uh, <laughs> put you in the pantomime or something. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you uh, next month, no doubt, for some more uh, stories and maybe some singing if we're really lucky. Thanks, Ken. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Take care for now. Okay. <laughs>